you've been sharing some things with us today. And uh, so what we want to share is just what's in our heart, what the Lord has been <clears throat> revealing, <clears throat> excuse me, what the Lord has been revealing to uh, to us, uh, even in the last few minutes. And it's about turning problems into opportunities. We all face problems. And what's interesting is those problems uh, are a package that contain a prize uh, for those who are discerning. So there's a prize uh, that, that you can receive from understanding the problem and solving the problem a prize and it's hidden and it's hidden in God mm -hmm. and in Christ. And uh, uh, it's real important for us to know how to handle problems. A lot of people, when they're facing a problem, their first response is ask God to solve the problem. But uh, some of the problems are really tests that we need to overcome. <clears throat> Excuse me. We need to overcome those tests. And, and so, test of life. So what I'm going to talk about today is really just life skills, uh, skills that we all need uh, to overcome problems. And I want you to know that everybody faces problems. Mm -hmm. And if we don't overcome them, then they're going to come right back around. And they keep coming around and around and around until we mm -hmm. face them and overcome them. And so today we're going to be talking about how how to overcome those. And of course, it's by the Holy Spirit because that's the member of the Godhead that's here with us leading and guiding us. So don't let your problems push you around, but let the Holy Spirit lead you and Amen. guide you. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who knows how to find the prize associated with the problems. For the problems are a test uh, that we need to overcome. And if we if we pass the test, we get the prize. And we'll be talking about that and giving some uh, examples of it, uh, how to pass a test. And I want to, to start by saying, um, how do we abide in Christ? It's important to know whether or not you are abiding in Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, in uh, John six fifty six, he says, if you eat my body and drink, eat my flesh, and drink my blood, blood <laughs> you will abide in me. Mm -hmm. now, everybody's mm -hmm. not there. Everybody's not abiding uh, in him. And so I'm going to share you to read this, and then we can talk about how that happens. John 6, 56. He who eats my <clears throat> flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. Okay. So, you know, John 15, 7 says, If we abide in him and his words abide in us, we shall ask what we will and it shall be done. Well, you want to solve the problem, you need you need to be abiding in Christ. Hallelujah. And uh, this says, you know, that we partake of his flesh. And, of course, his flesh, he is the word of God. And so if we are in the word of God and eating the word of God, oh, hallelujah, if we eat the word of God, then we are eating his flesh. And so we're just consuming it. And, and uh, you know, Jesus said, uh, if you drink the water that I give you, you'll never thirst again. Well, it's the same with his flesh, uh, with the word of God. You, you get in there and consume his uh, flesh, his word, and uh, it will fill you. And, and there are two kinds of uh, words. You can have uh, milk of the word, and that's for immature people. That mm -hmm. soothes and mm -hmm. soothes and comforts us. But the strong meat, and that's what's going to change us. Uh, that has to. We have to have a revelation of the Holy Spirit on it uh, for us really to be a strong meat. And that's what's going to change us. So when we're consuming His Word, we are eating His flesh, and when we are partaking of Him. Uh, uh, when communion, for example, mm -hmm. then we're eating his flesh and drinking his blood in communion. So you have that relationship and fellowship with him, then you are abiding in him. Now, there's a lot of people that are not. And so I want you to think, are you one of those who are abiding in 
Jesus. Amen. Uh, Amen. We all can do it. It's an invitation. He wants us to come there and partake uh, of his life and live, right, right. live through him. It's not our life that we live, mm. but we live through him. Well, and so what's Hallelujah. the advantage of being in Christ? And that is 1 Corinthians 15, 57, that we will have victory in Christ. Hallelujah. So if we are in Christ, then we will have victory. So read this verse, Sherry. It says, but this is 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, he always gives us victory, okay? So we have problems. That's what we're looking at today, how to overcome problems. Well, the way we overcome the problems is to abide in Christ. Amen. And again, how do we do it then? How do we abide in him? Well, we make him Lord and Savior. We have fellowship with him. We commune with him. We have communion with him. And, and then we're abiding in him and he gives us the victory. Oh, hallelujah. He gives us the answer. And that's the solution to the problem. Amen. Amen. So we all face problems. And so this is a life skill uh, lesson tonight. Hallelujah. A lesson hallelujah. that we all need to know because we need to, to turn it, turn whatever problem it is, and turn it to our good. You know, that's what Jesus said. Uh, he's going to turn things to our good because he has a purpose, a destiny, and a purpose for you. And so the evil things and the bad things that happen mm -hmm. in your life, he wants to turn them to good. That's Romans 8, 28 and 29. So he wants to turn them to good, but we've got to be abiding in him. And, and so that we are going to benefit uh, from him turning it uh, to our good. He wants to do that, but we need to be abiding in him. Amen. 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 No, let's sing that little chorus that we okay. were singing it for the very king. Okay. Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, come now, Holy Spirit, flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and worries over you, I roll. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you see that? We've got to roll some things over on him, our burdens, uh, the problems when they come. Uh, and, and I want you to See, uh, Philippians 2, and I know I've uh, I mentioned this before, but uh, Philippians 2 says we need to do something, and then God will do something when we do our part. He will do his part. Read these mm -hmm. two verses. Here. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you both to desire and to do his good pleasure. Okay. So let, let's look at this then. It says, work out your own salvation. Or, or I could put it this way. Work out your own solution. Work out your solution to the problems. Overcome your problems with fear and trembling and let him work through us. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. It's him working through us by the work of the Holy Spirit, working through us. But we have a role to play when the problem comes. Now, we don't want to just put our head in the sand like the ostrich and just deny it and ignore mm -hmm. it. No, we want to overcome it. And so we're going to talk about tonight, how is it that we can overcome problems? How can we turn them into opportunities so that we can grow, mm -hmm. <laughs> overcome them, yeah. but also in the process we're becoming more like, like God, Jesus. Amen. more like Christ, more Christ-like. And that's a, it, it, the opportunity is there, but we've got to take hold of it. So problems, there's always a test that we have to overcome. But when we overcome the, when we pass the test, we get the prize. We'll talk about what those prizes might look like. Mm -hmm. But I want to give just a basic framework for how we overcome problems and it's 
laid out here in James chapter 1, verses 2 through 8. This is telling how you can overcome tests and problems. Mm -hmm. It says, count it all joy. Oh, I've got to stop right there. Yeah. Whatever it is, whatever your problem is, count it all joy. That's the starting point. If you want to overcome problems, this is your starting point. This is always your starting point. That's your perspective. That's the perspective mm -hmm. on it. You are going to have to say, I count it joy. This is joy. Why would you be joyful about a problem? Because you know this is a test, test. And when you pass the test, you get a prize. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you start from any other point, of uh, particularly points of negativity, mm -hmm. if you start with negative thoughts, oh, this is a big problem. I'm fearful. I'm anxious. You're not starting in the right way. And if you start with a fleshly thoughts, natural thoughts, you will wind up with bad results. You know, there's a lot of problems that come mm -hmm. and that uh, they want to bring disaster to us. They want That's to bring right. all kinds of destruction to us uh, when the problems come. And so we've got to have the right perspective. Where do we start? Don't look at negative things. Don't get involved with negative thinking. We've got to think like God. We're seated in heavenly places where Christ is, we're at his own right hand, in heavenly places, far above all the problems. We're far above. And so we have to remember that when we are in Christ, we have the victory, but he's going to show it. And it's not obvious. Uh, we're going to have to overcome, and the way we overcome is through the Holy Spirit by applying the Word of God. So we have the right perspective. You have to start with the problems. When you find a problem that you want to overcome, now, don't you have problems in your life that you want to overcome? This is the starting point. This is the perspective you need. Count it all joy. For if you keep your joy you will keep your strength because yeah. Nehemiah 8.10 says the joy of the Lord it's is your strength. strength. So if you don't start with joy, you're going to be weak. And when you're weak, you, you lose things and you lose battles. But when you're strong, mm. you're going to have victory because you are in Jesus. Amen. Don't you want Amen. victory in every situation? You know, even a, a small loss could be devastating. We need victory every Amen. day Amen. in every situation. The way to start is with the joy of the Lord, keeping your strength. And how could you have joy? It's because you know the outcome. You are assured Hallelujah. that you're going to pass the test. You're going to receive the prize. That's why you can be joyful. See, if the enemy cannot get your joy, he cannot keep your goods. But if he, you get weak, you get fearful, you get anxious about things, you get burdened down by things, then the enemy can steal from you and he will keep them. He won't let you have them back. You, it takes strength to keep the enemy out and to take things away from the enemy. You have to be strong, and it starts right here in James chapter 1, verse 2. Count it all joy. Count everything joy. Don't get down mm. and, and oppressed and depressed. Count it all joy. Keep your strength because of your confidence in the Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. It says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing okay oh, oh here it is lacking nothing and so it, he's talked about three spiritual things joy mm -hmm. and faith and patience mm -hmm. and those are all fruits of the spirit yeah fruit of the spirit mm. individual fruit of the spirit oh hallelujah joy faith and Patience. Oh, I mean. And, and so this is, and, and what is the fruit of the Spirit? But it is the nature of God. 
And so we're developing faith. Mm. Okay, but it's going to take some patience uh, to get there. It, we're going. To, it's going to take patience to develop faith. Mm -hmm. And and that's why he's talking right off the bat that this is a spiritual battle. We need to understand that you're a spiritual person and you fight spiritual battles with spiritual it's weapons. weapons. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We fight spiritual, Amen. Fight spiritual, spiritual battles, battles with spiritual weapons. weapons. Amen. And those are powerful weapons. Mm. Okay. So go okay. on, Terry. And we're going to lack nothing, it says. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Okay, let's. we need to just think about this for a moment. So we're going to pass a test. What do we need to pass a test? We need wisdom. We need wisdom to pass a test. How do you get wisdom? You ask for it. You have, because the Holy Spirit is going to know what type of wisdom you need for the specific the problem, problem that you face. We, this is not a general uh, a solution to things. This is when a problem comes. These are the things we need to consider. This is the this is the process we need to be going through. Have the right attitude. Keep mm -hmm. your joy. Uh, see if you don't have your joy. The enemy will just pass, will push you around. You can't let your problems push you around. And, and to pass the test, then you're going to need wisdom. But you have to have faith. You have to ask for wisdom with faith, and the Holy Spirit will give it to you. But you need to be singly focused. Hallelujah. Focused on one thing, on Jesus who is the solution to Amen. your problem. Amen. Whatever Amen. your problem is, Jesus is the solution. Yeah, he's the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, he's the way. How to overcome this? He's the mm. way. Jesus. Jesus is the way. And and so we need to ask for wisdom. He he has the wisdom we need to ask for. It. The Lord will give it to you abundantly. Hallelujah. And so he's not withholding anything, just like we were talking to Wendy earlier uh, tonight. She she wanted to know, have wisdom about a situation, and the Holy Spirit spoke to her and, and revealed it to her. And so you just ask, and the Holy Spirit yes, will, he will reveal it to you, Sherry. And then you'll lack nothing. That means you have the victory. Okay. okay. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by every wind. For let not the Person suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord if he is double-minded because he is unstable in all of his ways. Okay, let's, let me just comment yeah, about this. Instability. And there's a lot of people that are double-minded. And that mm -hmm. is they speak the word. And when they're around spiritual people, they will quote scriptures. They'll quote scriptures. Mm -hmm. But in their heart, they have fear. They have anxiety. Mm -hmm. They have all kinds of issues, mm -hmm. negative issues going on in their life. But yet when they're around spiritual people, they will talk like they are spiritual. But but it's that double-mindedness. And, and oh, they can proclaim the word of God and they can declare the word of God and they can pray with a really uh, eloquent prayers but they're double-minded. You see that? They're, they're not focused on one single thing. But part of the time when they're around spiritual people, they look like and sound like they're spiritual. When they're around worldly, natural people, they, they talk like them, uh, and they talk about all of their problems. And see, mm -hmm. what we're talking about tonight is not about talking about your problems and uh, getting on the phone and telling everybody about your problems. No, this is about how to overcome your problems. Mm -hmm. And you don't overcome your problems by by uh, magnifying them. And and, and mm -hmm. you talk, oh, I've got this problem. And it's so bad and it's so bad. I've been to the doctor and the and the doctor said there's a, uh, nobody else that's ever had anything this bad. And so it's going to 
It's going to bring me down. It's going to, and, and so you start talking like that. That's negative. That's mm -hmm. all negative. And that's, then you go around and, and around spiritual people and say, Oh, I believe God is my healer. But see, that's a, a positive and negative and, and you're putting them all together and it doesn't work. And I know a lot of people mm. that can quote scriptures and they quote them and quote them and quote them. But yet I see their mind, uh, that they're mm -hmm. double minded and they're not getting anything from God. They're not getting the prize. They're not getting the prize. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Sherry, did We're we finish after the prize. from James? Did we finish the James? We did. Okay. So I want to give it some examples now. I want to talk about Joseph. Um, Joseph. Uh, you know him from uh, Genesis. Um, he was the uh, young son of uh, Jacob, uh, who was later called Israel. And so he was a young son, and uh, he favored him. Uh, his father favored him, gave him a, a coat of many colors, uh, showing his favor upon him. He had a lot of brothers, but uh, he favored Joseph. And uh, But the other brothers hated him. And then he had some dreams from God. Um, because God's hand was upon him. God had a purpose and a destiny for him. And he told uh, his brothers and, and they hated him even more. And, and so they threw him in a pit and then uh, he was sold into slavery and went down to Egypt. Okay, so these are problems. Boy, <laughs> don't you think being out in the wilderness and mm -hmm. being in a pit, thrown in a pit, that, that's a problem. That's a problem. You were sold into slavery, into Egypt, that's a problem. Separated from your family, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody else around. Uh, he's down there in Egypt and uh, he's got problems. But he knew how to overcome them. He remembered that God was with him and God prospered him. And whatever he did, whatever mm -hmm. he put his hand to, What's well, the same thing with you? You remember that God is with you. You are in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, you eat his flesh. You drink his blood. We abide in him. You abide in him. And the victory. See, your problems are not outside of Christ. Because you are in Christ, your problems are in Christ. And when you're in Christ, you're mm -hmm. bigger Hallelujah than your problems. Problem. Because Christ in you Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, over your hallelujah. problems, but you can't overcome your problems naturally. This is not about natural teaching today. This is about spiritual teaching. This is about how to live life above situations and circumstances and solve problems. You are a problem solver. And, oh, hallelujah. And, and, hallelujah. And I'm going to show you how to do it here tonight. What I've been teaching is how to solve your problems. Now, Joseph solved but, the problems. Okay, sure. Well, I just had a thought. We in, the, in our school systems, we have what we call enrichment classes. And those classes are uh, for uh, students who are achievers and 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 they learn new things and they are challenged and and you know I, I'm looking at a group of people right now that you are in a advanced enrichment uh, class right now. Hallelujah! In the name of and Jesus. This is a problem solving class. This is a problem. That's what I was going to say. Okay. Yes, because you're learning how to solve problems. That's how to solve problems God's way. Amen. Now. The world has their way, but a lot of times the world's way will not work. But Jesus is the way to solve your problem. And that's what this lesson is about. How to overcome your problems. Joseph overcame his problems. And one mm -hmm. of the first tests uh, that he had was Potiphar's wife. He was sold into slavery in a home uh, that was owned by a man named Potiphar in Egypt. And uh, he was, Joseph was a young man. He was immature when he was sold into slavery. He, he was just a young man and he had not matured and he had to pass some tests. He had to grow spiritually, he had to grow into maturity. And so he had to pass some tests. And one of the That's first good. tests That's that it talked about 
was Potiphar's wife came and looked at him and thought, oh, he's a, he's a handsome young man. Uh, so you, you just come here and uh, uh, we'll, we'll lie together and we'll have uh, uh, fun together. And so it just offered him a, a lot of things that the world had to offer. <clears throat> and uh, he wouldn't go for it. He stood by mm -hmm. his principles. He had integrity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's a test. And here's the prize. And the prize is what's going on inside of him, what God is working on the inside of him. I said he began the process as an immature man and he had as a young as a young man, immature young man, teenager. And he had to overcome a lot of things. He had to overcome problems, but he found the prizes. And in this case, the prize was his integrity. God worked integrity in him. Oh, and, you, and you might say, well, uh, you don't see integrity. Well, I said the prizes are hidden. Mm -hmm. And we see this from Philippians 2. And I have a verse I want Sherry to read. Uh, Philippians 2. Um, I believe it starts 21, 22. Is that it? <clears throat> Uh, no, I don't see it. No, I, maybe I didn't put it there. I'm sorry. Okay. But I just tell it. To you. Okay. Work out your own salvation. Oh yeah, we I, we just read that. With fear and trembling. With fear and trembling. Okay, but I'm explaining it now. Oh, okay. okay. With fear and trembling. Yes. For it For, is God who is at work in you to do to both to desire and to work. <laughs> He has good pleasure. Okay. So here it is. Joseph is going through a test. His uh, master's wife wants him to be unfaithful to God, wants him uh, to go lie with her. And he wouldn't do it. He stayed by his principles. He stayed by God because he and God, God was always there with him and prospering him. And so when he... Uh, did not fall for the temptation when he did not uh, succumb to the problem. Uh, God worked inside of him. So he had to come up with a solution. Work out your own salvation, or I'm going to say, work out your own solution with fear and trembling. And that fear and trembling means it's fear of God. You're you're fearful of God. You're reverencing God. Amen. And God, when you're doing that, God is on the inside of you, Hallelujah. working things out in your nature and in your character. He's bringing forth integrity in Joseph. Hallelujah. And so the prize for overcoming the test, the test was whether or not he was going to uh, commit sin or with this woman who was a approaching him and wanting to him to sin with her and he would not do it. And God was working a prize in him, changing his nature, uh, giving him integrity. That was the prize uh, that Joseph got. Now there's another man that had to overcome some problems. I'll mention then we'll come back to Joseph, but the man Job, uh, there was a whole book uh, written by Job or about Job, and it was called Job, and and he lost everything. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a wealthy, wealthy man, the, one of the most wealthy men in all of the that part of the world, and he lost everything. He lost uh, all of his animals and his servants and his children. He just lost everything, and and uh, his wife said, uh, just cuss God, curse God, and die. Mm -hmm. But he was a man of integrity. He had law problems. Oh, yeah. You cannot imagine the imagine the trials and tests that he went through. But he kept his integrity. See, he was an immature person at the beginning of that book. But God was working maturity in him, bringing forth mm -hmm. the nature mm -hmm. of God in Job. Hallelujah. And at the, but he kept his integrity. That was the prize that he got for overcoming all of those problems. And at the end of the book, you you look at it and he, and he prayed for so-called friends who were really, uh, uh, I'd, I'd call enemies. them enemies. And when he prayed for his enemies, 
That's what I call it. Oh, hallelujah. His everything was restored. <laughs> Amen. You want to ask? You want to know why we're being told oh, to hallelujah. pray for our enemies? Bless love, our enemies. Bless those enemies and love those enemies. Oh, hallelujah, because God's working some things. Woo, hallelujah. Working things on the inside of you. We're going to get a prize. And you'll get a prize if you pray for your enemies. Job's was, oh, he, he, he wound up with the greatest wealth That's of right. anybody right. uh, for in that part of the world. And God restored everything and, and double, much more. Double. Double portion. Double, double, double. Whoop. Double. I, I like double. Don't you like Amen. double? Amen. Amen. Okay. So how do you overcome? Well, you, you've got to overcome the test. You've got to abide in Christ because that's where your victory is. Abiding in Christ. Then that's where the victory is. And James told us how to do it. You count it all joy. So there's Joseph in slavery, and he is joyful and just going about doing, and God is with him and prospering everything he does. And because he didn't uh, do what the Potiphar's wife wanted, he was sold into, I mean, he was thrown into prison. prison. But, you know, God was working on the inside Hallelujah. of him, bringing forth God's nature in Joseph. And and the and finally he got out and, and uh, Pharaoh put him uh, as, as head over uh, uh, the granaries and they were going to uh, put up a lot of, store a lot of grain for the famine, time and famine, seven years of famine. Mm -hmm. And uh, another test that Joseph had to come overcome and not only all those others but the last test that he had to overcome was to encounter his, his brothers, brothers who had thrown him in the pit sold him into slavery and and caused him all of this grief and sorrow and suffering and he had to face them and how was he going to face them well you know he kept his integrity and god worked something new a new prize oh hallelujah that, that have to forgive see he, Woo, forgiveness he, he had to god had to work forgiveness in joseph and he did god worked mm -hmm. joe that's the prize that was the prize and uh now the prizes i'm talking about they may not be gold and silver they may be mm -hmm. just changing nature so that god changes your nature gives you his nature his nature Ooh, hallelujah we're partakers he, of his nature he, you know we're just the old man on the outside mm -hmm. but he's, we're, we're supposed to uh, he's working on the new inside we're supposed to put off the old man yeah and put on the, put new. On the new man and the new man is fashioned after christ hallelujah hallelujah and and this is really important for us to understand that we are all going to face problems god wants to turn them to our good but if we don't overcome them if we don't pass the test and find the prize the prize is hidden and we can't know what it is but by the holy spirit and if we don't pass those tests the the tests keep coming around again yeah we face the same thing over and over again but as you overcome those tests, see, God's going to move you to a higher level because he's working things on the inside of you. You won't be the same person. As you overcome these tests, you're going to be able to move to a higher level in the Lord. You're going to amen, be, amen. He's going to be promoting you. He's going to be exalting Ooh, hallelujah, you. Hallelujah. When hallelujah. You, when you pass these tests because you're receiving these prizes mm, 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 and, and mm. it may be his nature you're partaking of the nature, nature of God, God as you're as you're overcoming these tests. And and Joseph had a lot of tests to overcome, but he overcame them all. Amen. And Amen. And, and then uh uh and I love this verse. Uh anytime I talk about uh, Joseph, I want to go to Genesis forty five eight, I believe it is, that says uh, <laughs> you uh wanted to do evil to me. This he's talking to his brothers, he said, You you, you wanted, wanted to, to do, do evil. evil. But God sent me here, and now I am uh, the father of Pharaoh. Pharaoh. I am Lord of his household, and I am ruler over all of Egypt. So Ooh. he was promoted. He was exalted. Oh, hallelujah. 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 He, he was just a young, immature person. 
See, it takes the word of God and not just the milk of the word, but it takes the revelation of the word of God mm -hmm. working in mm -hmm. your life to uh, change you into the image of Jesus Christ and uh, to help you overcome the problems. This message is about overcoming problems. And when the nature of God is comes forth inside mm. of you, then faith will arise. Woo! Glory! When, when you partake of the nature mm. of God, mm, your faith will, will arise. arise. And then we're down mm. to this last oh, verse. Oh, love that, love that. 1 John 5, 4, I believe it is. And, and something will overcome the problem. What is it? For whoever has been born of God, that you and I, overcomes the world. Praise the name of Jesus. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. And that's our faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So whatever the problem is, when your nature becomes God's nature, you have the perspective, perspective of, of God. God. And then your faith will Hallelujah. arise Hallelujah. and you will overcome the problem. Oh, thank because you, it's the faith is the victory faith. over oh, the problem. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Hallelujah. Whatever the problem Woo! is, you need to deal with it. You need to face it head on. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to pray that God uh, we'll uh, just fix, come and, and fi fix just... this problem. That, that's not what the problem is there. No. The problem is to is there for you to pass a test Hallelujah. and find the prize. You do it by following the Holy Spirit. He's your guide. He gives you the victory because you are in Christ. Your problem is in Christ. Your solution is in Christ. Everything is in, in Christ, Christ. In Christ. Because him. you are in Christ. How did you get there? Hallelujah. Because you ate his flesh and you drank his blood. Ooh, That's why he said. God. That's the way we get in there. And if you haven't eaten his flesh and drunk his blood, you're not in Christ. Mm, because that's mm. who he said is going to be abiding in him. Hallelujah. And he's going to be abiding in us. Hallelujah. Yeah. And when our faith arises, because we've overcome, and that and when that faith arises, then we overcome the problem and we find the prize. And the prize is hidden. It's the nature of God coming forth in you your know, life. Hallelujah. Thank you for hallelujah. being here today. Hallelujah. I hope this love Life hallelujah, hallelujah. And so when we see any situation that presents itself as a problem, then I pray for each one of us, I'm including Brother Fred and I in this, that that you will see it as an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to be more like Jesus, an opportunity to overcome and an opportunity to get the prize. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs>